We're back to working on the Nova. We've got a lot done. We got a lot more to do. Stick around. Okay, so we've got a lot done, and in fact, you'll notice one big thing. Hey, I think we're officially a race car. Got our parachute mounted up using the Motion Race Works uh, parachute mount. Pretty nice little kit. A uh, couple tips. I didn't do a video on this, but a couple tips is you're going to have to cut some room out on your bumper if you're doing this. Uh, go ahead and pull the entire bumper off. It replaces the factory bumper brackets, which I've got over here in the scrap bin replaces those and then the bumper mounts up to the same location the only location that doesn't mount up is this one. Ooh, i must have gotten into the paint thank goodness the paint's ugly on this i did drop the bumper once uh but it mounts up here then the two underneath and then all the factory chassis locations which i don't know if you're really going to be able to see too well or underneath in there now the only thing i do need to do is relocate the filler neck and so i'm actually going to bring that up through the trunk, I'll build a box right here and then go down 90 and use like a marine style sealed filler neck in here. This is gonna be firewalled off anyways because of the battery relocation. So that's not a big ordeal there. Something else I'm wanting to do is run a cable up to the trunk so you can release the trunk without having to use the key. Uh, I'll do a video on that because I think somebody might like to do something like that on an older car and basically there's a way that you can attach in on this to do a release also did our battery disconnect i got to run the cables over to that from the positive side over to isolate all the power to the front not a big ordeal there in fact i'll just go ahead and cut this off here i've got a pretty heavy duty splice kit that i can splice in there extend this out over to our lugs and then run it over i think the battery will be able to stay there because we're going to be tying in in this area since this is where the chassis comes through for our roll bar we're going to be working on that this weekend. We'll see though. But the big things right now is I got all the seat brackets cut out. And here is our doubler plate. I haven't mounted that yet, but that's where one of them will go. There will be another one over there. And then we'll bend our plates up for this area for our main hoop. I got to get the seat kind of specced out for that so we can start it this weekend. But today we're going to be working on getting our suspension sorted out. And as I talked about... One of the previous videos, I did go ahead and get a set of uh, Caltrek split mono leafs that are lowered because I want to tuck that tire up. If you follow me on Instagram, Goat Rope Garage, I sent a picture of being able to get that 275 way up in the wheel well. And so I decided, hey, let's go ahead and tuck that thing down a little bit. I did cut the spring on the front, another half coil. Our uh, subframe connector turned out pretty good. Did a little grinding on it, clean it up a little bit painted it up but everything's nice and stiff i love these things so far because it really helps for getting the car down on jack stands and i see i need to adjust that one over there because it's a little bit loose and i'm guaranteeing you there's not much weight on it because of the subframe connector okay one of the things to be aware of if you order the mono leafs from calvert racing it comes with the metal bushings installed in the front in fact not only does it come with metal bushings it comes with multiple spacers and uh the uh center roller that goes inside the bushing whatever you want to call that the uh for the leaf spring i guess it'd be the inner bushing and then the back ones have poly and they come with spacers also so we have this kit that came with our uh, cow tracks not going to need those we'll set those aside same ordeal we've got leaf spring bushings that come with the detroit speed hardware shouldn't need those either we'll be using our uh, detroit speed uh, bolts because we got the front and rear bolts for the leaf springs on here, which is a nice add. We'll have to use the existing shackles. Uh, I'll have to pull those off. Those are floating around somewhere. And then we've got all the loose hardware that's going to go for our plate. Now, the big thing about our plates, we have to install these on the leaf spring before these go up in the car for a couple reasons. We need to install these so we can hang the leaf spring from the rear shackles and from the two J nut locations, which are going to be this one and this one. There's three ones stock. We're using two of them for this. We get rid of the one that's over here because we're running all the extra hardware through here. We don't need the one over here. Go ahead and order yourself a new set of J-nuts whenever you do this. There's a good chance that your leaf springs have not been off the car for a while and the buckets are held on by uh, J-nuts. You're gonna to need to replace these. So 
cheap insurance to make sure that you don't get stuck not being able to do it over the weekend or something like that. Uh, but what we need to do is go ahead and get the leaf springs bolted up into the buckets, which means in turn go ahead and mounting our cow track uh, into the bucket also because once you get these up in the body, specifically on X bodies and F bodies, you can't get the bolts in and out. And so in order to uh, install the leaf springs, the bucket has to come out anyways. The other thing is that we're gonna use the leaf springs to align these brackets. And basically we'll hang the shackles in the rear, hang these up front using the two J nuts without tightening them down, kind of move everything around, shake it, let it settle to where it wants to be, and then scribe it, come back down off the car, pull the leaf spring out at that point in time, put this back in on our scribe marks, and then we'll proceed to go through and mark our holes so we can do our doubler plate and get that welded on and do our final attachment on this. Okay, I got the buckets on there. I had to ground down the inner bushes just a slight bit. And then with the actually the thick washers, it's able to get them to slide up in there. So we've got the cow track bracket on there. The bucket's ready to go. I've got the uh, rear shackle hangers ready. I've got the new bushings in the car in the frame. This of course already has the bushings on the backside. We may need to run uh, the additional spacers for those rear bushings. We'll see whenever we get everything hung up in there. But for now, we're gonna hang in the uh, front sections of both leaf spring, let them sit on the ground, and we're gonna go ahead and put in our new J nuts real quick. Okay, there's nothing more fun than hanging leaf springs by yourself, especially whenever you gotta deal with all these brackets and stuff. But both of sets are hung, or both the both are hung. I guess it's just one set. And everything's still loose right now. And that's because you want this thing to be loose on the back end so you can kind of get this bracket centered up and then tighten it down. Because what we're gonna do now is go ahead and run down the two J bolts that we do have in here. And this is going to serve for our mounting. We're going to go ahead and I'll grab my silver marker, draw out an outline on this bracket so I can drop this back down, pull the leaf spring out, and then we can bolt this back up and make sure that we get it in the same location on both sides. That way we then can come in and start drilling out these holes to uh, bolt down the doubler plate. Okay, after you get your stuff scribed on the bottom, you're gonna bolt it up without the leaf spring and drill two holes. They're gonna be the out or the forward and aft outside holes on both sides. And then you're going to use that as a guide to run in two bolts to your doubler plate. This bolt bolts into the spring perch. This one goes through the spring perch and bolts into the doubler plate. Just make sure that you Kind of leave everything a little bit loose so you can move it around to make sure and get these all started, get all four bolts started, then tighten them down. On top of it, I did do a little bit of trimming on this one and a lot on the other one to get out of the body uh, pinch weld basically on that side. So instructions say do what you got to do to make it fit. Other than that, just maybe a quarter of an inch and a half an inch on the other side. So once you've got this point done, you're going to go ahead and transfer the other seven holes and so it's this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one right here. I'm going to transfer, punch all those and drill them out. These are all going to be the uh, 3 8 by 16 and then there's going to be one, of, one long bolt that goes through the frame over here. That'll be your final one. That's going to be a 7 16 bolt. Uh, you can go a little bit bigger than a, you know, I'm using a 5 8 bit, and that is just spot on for a 3 8 uh, but it might get a little bit tough to make sure that all these holes line up. And so, you know, better to try and be as tight as possible. But if we need to, we might open up a little bit of these just a little bit so we can make sure and get everything uh, bolted back together specifically because we want to get all the bolts in before we start doing these or rosette welds here. And then we'll go around the plate uh, to do the final welding. So this will also be a good time. I'm gonna go ahead and mark the outline of the plate so I know where to come in, hit it with the wire wheel to clean everything up, and then we'll put down some uh, weld through primer on the bottom and go from there.
Okay, well, other than right there, I got a little more welding to do, but for the most part, I got the first, uh, the driver's side plate in. Still got to do the passenger side. Basically, hit the rosettes, go around the outside, get everything as much as you can. I'm not worried about too much over here because we're clamped down pretty good. And then, uh, what we'll do... Uh, hold on a second. Uh, what we'll do after that, uh, we'll end up having to pull the brackets, the bottom perches back out in order to get the springs back up in there. So we can go ahead and get the front of the springs ready to go and then drop the back down. That way, whenever we get the axle in, we can roll it in at the back, swing her up, bolt everything down, go to town. Listen, I'm going to get back to welding. That is, uh, if you got any questions about doing this job, if you're looking to do something like it, hit up the comments down below. If you find this con uh, you know, stuff good as usual, throw a thumbs up. Helps me out a lot. And this is just the next step down towards Rocky Mountain Race Week. You guys know the drill. Thanks for stopping by the garage. Remember, ABT, always be tuning. Ah!